Hi there, everybody. Christy Nickel here, founder of Lean U, where we show you how to do more with less through the application of Lean. Welcome back to another training video on how to consistently improve the level of quality you provide your customer while reducing costs and changing your business culture for the better. When I first got introduced to Lean, it was, it was kind of by fluke. I was working full-time for a large corporation when I was approached and asked if I would want to participate in a full-time training program solely focused on Lean. Now, I'll be honest, I had never heard of Lean before, so I did a little bit of research and it sounded really interesting. So I gladly accepted and right away I was put into the program. I was flown to Toronto for one week a month where I learned the technical tools of Lean. And then I came back to my hometown in Vancouver, BC, and I was tasked with implementing the tools in all different areas of the organization. So not only was I applying the technical tools, but I had to get all that culture stuff down. Who do I get involved with depending on what area I was working in? How do I pass the tools on to them? So as a team, we can figure out how to best apply them within their work area. How do we come up with root causes and potential solutions and try the solutions and then look at the results? You know, did they achieve what we wanted them to? And the ones that did, how do we make sure that they were sustained? It was just awesome. And after two and a half years of this, I was certified as a lean black belt. And I'll tell you, I was a convert. This stuff works and it's not hard. You don't have to have a PhD in quantum mechanics to understand the concepts of lean and begin to figure out how it can help your business and in what areas. And you don't have to go from having zero lean understanding or implementation experience to becoming a lean enterprise and implementing the tools from A to Z. Now, don't get me wrong, I would highly recommend that because that's when you get the momentum and the traction and incredible results in the areas of productivity improvements and cash flow improvements and reducing your costs. But it doesn't have to be all or nothing. There are so many standalone topics under the lean umbrella that can be implemented within your business based on your individual needs that can still have substantial results in the same areas of productivity, cash flow, costs, and quality, customer satisfaction. So that's why I created Lean U. I want to get the tools out there. I want to make them accessible to all of manufacturing and strengthen the sector within Canada. The tools on hard. I can help you with that. I just want to make sure every company knows the value of these tools, has the concepts accessible to them and understands that they can do this. You can do this. And Lean U is going to show you how. So on to today's topic, value streams. In the last video, I introduced you to the seven traditional types of waste that Lean is focused on reducing. And we'll review those in just a moment. Today, I'm going to give you the cornerstone of lean, which is value streams. And this will really help you see where the wastes are happening within your business. So a value stream is all of the actions required to bring your product from order to delivery. That's it. You get a call from a customer. There's a certain sequence of steps that needs to take place for you to provide them what they have ordered. That's your value stream. So I have an example here for you. And this is from a customs plastic fabricator and it's a coffee stand. So, you know, you walk into a convenience store, put your cup underneath the coffee and you, you press the button and you get your coffee. The stand that the urn is sitting on, that's the product we're referring to. So here's the value stream for a coffee stand. They receive the order from the customer. They're going to receive in some raw materials. Those raw materials are first going to go to a panel saw then to a vacuum form, to a band saw, to the table router, onto the table saw, to assembly, to the packaging area, spend a little bit of time in a finished goods warehouse, and then it goes to shipping for delivery to the customer. So that's the value stream for that particular product. Now, when you think about what the value streams are for your business, I hope you will notice that this is a horizontal approach to why we're in business. Now, traditionally, we set up our businesses in silos according to functions or departments. So you could have a purchasing department, a production department. Oftentimes, production is even broken down 
into different areas with different people responsible for each of the areas. A shipping department, you could have new product development departments. And normally all of these silos are working in isolation from each other. So the metrics that you're tracking, that your success is being judged against, they're all completely separate from one another and there's no communication going between them. So when you think about the reason that you're in business, which is to supply high quality products to your customers in the shortest amount of time possible at a price that they think is reasonable for the value they get out of your product, right? When you think about making your customers happy so you can build your business, they don't care about functions or departments. We create our value horizontally and it touches many functions and departments. So it's looking at it from end to end. And when you look at it as a whole, it also prevents point improvements. Going back to what I just mentioned, when you have functions and departments acting in isolation from each other, if one, if one area is looking at improving something, they may be completely blind to the impact of that change to a process downstream. One area may have a bottleneck, so maybe they're going to come up with a solution and implement it, and maybe they get rid of the bottleneck there, yay, everyone's happy, but you've just created a bottleneck a couple processes downstream. So what was the point of that? So when you focus your business on looking at your value streams or how you create value for your customer from beginning to end, you start to break down those silos and to focus your entire team on working together to improve quality, to shorten lead times, and to make your customers happy to grow your business. So now that you know what a value stream is, what do you do with it? Well, what you don't want to do with it is sit in an office with the best intentions and think about what your value stream is. Remember I mentioned this is the cornerstone for starting to see where these wastes are trapped within your business. So you want to go down to your work floor and walk the life of your product. Walk your value stream. Resist the temptation to stay in your office and put it on a nice whiteboard, right? That's not the purpose. You want to see where your resources and your cash are being spent. So go down onto your work floor and follow the life of your product. Now, not many people do that. And the reason, once again, is for all those things I was just discussing a few moments ago. We traditionally have silos and I'm responsible for this area. I'm not responsible for that area and I'm not responsible for that area. So I'm just going to sit in my own area. So it's not very often that you take the viewpoint of all of the processes required to bring our product from order to delivery horizontally across the board. When you do that though, it is so valuable because you are going to see three types of work that are going to be occurring. You are going to see value added work, what we call incidental work and pure waste. So in order for work to be considered value adding, there are three criteria it needs to meet. Firstly, it needs to physically change the product or add important information. It cannot be rework. It has to be done right the first time. And lastly, your customer has to be willing to pay for it. So think about that. If a customer was standing beside you watching a team member make a part of their product, would they want to pay for what they see? If it's yes, then that's a value added work, right? Then the second type of work, incidental work. Now this is work that, you know what, your customers wouldn't want to pay for it. No argument there. So it's not considered value added, but given your processes, you don't have an option. You have to do it. So an example could be um, attaching two fixtures together so that they could be welded. The actual activities of clamping those fixtures together, the time it takes to do that, wouldn't be considered value added to your customer. They wouldn't want to pay for that. But given existing technology and given the state of the nation now with respect to your processes, you don't have an option. You have to do it. And lastly, you're going to see that third type of work, which is pure waste. All of the stuff we were talking about in the last video. So as a quick review, here are the seven wastes. Transportation or excessive movement of people, of information or of materials. Waiting or periods of inactivity for people, information or materials. Motion or movement of people 
that does not add value to your product. Inventory, and we discussed raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. Overprocessing, which is doing more work than your customer's value. Defects, products or paperwork errors. And lastly, but certainly not least, overproduction or producing more product sooner than the next process or your customer is ready for. So remember, I'm, I'm working and working in my process and I'm working as fast as I can and I make a whole bunch and I push that downstream and the next process isn't ready for it yet. So why did I just invest my time and my effort when it's just gonna sit there now? And we talked about it being the worst of all of the wastes because it magnifies all of the other types of waste we talked about, except for overprocessing. So those were the seven types of waste. So walk your value stream. Where are you seeing the value added work? Right? And that's the stuff, that's your meat and potatoes. Those are the work activities that you want to make sure are done perfectly every time. Where are you seeing incidental work? Where, you know, it's activities that aren't value added, but you don't have a choice. Well, you know, maybe we're going to table that for now, but we're going to keep our eyes open in the future for opportunities to reduce that time or eliminate those activities altogether. And where are you seeing the wastes, those seven types of waste? Where are you seeing inventory stagnating between your processes? Where are you seeing employees taking time to fix something that was done wrong the first time? You know, are you seeing big masses amounts of raw materials coming in, overwhelming your staff and taking hours just to put it in the shelving, let alone how long it's going to wait before it starts making its way through your processing steps? You know, do you see people waiting as machines are broken down? So that's why we call value streams kind of the, the cornerstone of lean, because when you start to see the life of your product, you see where the meat and potatoes is, where your value is being created, and then you see where your resources are being wasted so that you can pr list them, prioritize them, and figure out how to involve your employees to knock them off one at a time so that you can free up your cash, shorten your lead times, improve your productivity, reduce your costs, and make your customers super happy. Right? So that wraps up our discussion of value streams. In the next video, I'm going to provide you my five-step model for how to walk your value stream. There's a few things you want to be cognizant of and plan for before you head down onto the work floor. Now, that doesn't mean you can't head out on your own and just have a look. Go on, see what you see. I'm sure you're going to be surprised and share it with me. Please let me know. And if you have any questions, I answer them all personally. So let me know if you have any questions as well. But please share your experiences as you do that. But the real value in getting your value stream walked is to get a team of people together. Because you don't want to be the only one who sees things in a different light, who sees these wastes. You want your team to see them as well, so that together you can prioritize things that you want to improve and then act upon them. So I'm going to lay that all out for you in my next video so you have everything in, you need to get your team together and walk your value stream and start improving things right away. So we'll see you in a couple days and until then, make every action count.